Welcome to Hello Self. It's a podcast focused on turning your cans into cans and your dreams into plans. I am your host, coach, and author, Patricia Leonard. Hello and welcome to Hello Self Podcast. I am your host, Patricia Leonard, and I'm so excited you're here today. This podcast is really about turning cans into cans and your dreams into plans. And I interview guests that give you tips about how to do that and also just tell their own life story about how they did it and that they had fears just like all of us have. So if you're tuning in, to hear somebody else's story. You know how I believe in everyone's story, there are many gifts and lots of glories. So I'm going to give you just a little background about my guest, and then I'm going to turn it over to her. But before I give you her background, I just like Morelia to say, hello. You wanna say hello hello to our guest? (laughs) Hello, self. Hello, <laughs> hello self. I love it. I have to tell you a funny story. We knew, we know each other from women in film and television here in Nashville, Tennessee. But when I wrote this book last year, I put that title out there. The title was actually given to me by spirit. I know <laughs> some people may say that's crazy, but anyway, it came to me in a dream. And so when I said a little bit about what it was about, Mariella got it. Nobody (laughs) else got it. They said, what's that about? She nailed it. She understands. So you're in for a treat and I'm sure some surprises from my (laughs) guest today because I love (laughs) love who she is and we could be sisters from another mother or something like that just because we're willing to explore (laughs) so I'll give you just a little overview and then I'm going to turn it over to Morelia we've talked just a little bit about what uh, might be helpful and there'll be some surprises if I know her Okay, Morelia, known professionally as Morelia, is a confident, I can vouch for that, rowdy, yes, <laughs> rock and roll, and the only rhinestone heiress. Don't get forget that because that's, that is who she is recognized as in the world. She is a business and broadcast professional as well as a voiceover artist, event planner, and the best hostess in Nashville, Tennessee. And what you're going to find out today is she's much more than those titles that we just gave her. So you'll find that out as we go through the interview. Morelia is the granddaughter of internationally famous Rodeo Taylor Nudie and the daughter of Manuel, a couture clothier to the stars. The first time I ever heard about him, it was Alan Jackson had one of his jackets on. And I love the jacket. And I went, who designed that? I didn't know her at the time. Morelia has helped arrange his events. And not only that, just a lot of events because she works with different museums here in Nashville. She also is a diabetic patient or individual. So she works a lot on furthering diabetes investigation and uh, finding out how that can be, how they can do that. She is a star among stars. And this is, I love it. And she is a star. You're going to find out more. Her many career credits include co-producing Rhinestone and Roses, a fashion show that featured Manuel her father's fashion and the things that he's done. And they have worked with all kinds of country music artists as well as film artists. She grew up with playing with a lot of them and she'll tell you a little bit more about that. Clint Eastwood, of course, was one of my favorites that she had as a friend. But she uh, works, as I mentioned, with the Diabetics Association, Women in Film, and works with some local museums. Morelia has always 
will always lend a hand to others. And she comes in with a smile, no matter what she's doing, no matter how she's feeling, and produces and causes everybody else to get a smile, by the way. And so now I'm going to be quiet and turn <laughs> it over to Mariella and let her start with wherever she wants to start. She did not start in Nashville, Tennessee, though. She <laughs> came from someplace to Nashville. So she'll tell you that story. Okay, Moralia, we're ready. <laughs> Actually, I did come to Nashville in the early 90s when I was major league culture shocked from Los, yes. being from Los Angeles in my early 20s. That was a, <laughs> a lot <laughs> at first. Yes. But it definitely uh, it was a growing experience, uh, getting to know and myself, really, and oh, meeting others, and especially when you're from a, an area where everything is just right there and out there, and coming to a state, gradually learning where to go and what fits in and what works for you. Yes. And, and I think like anyone, when they come to Nashville, they get consumed really quickly into the place of it. If you get smart enough, you learn how to make it to your advantage to know how it how to work this town before it works you. <laughs> Good point. Good point. Because <laughs> I know it's worked a lot of people, and, and, and until you get to that point where you understand it, you make it work for you. Yeah. And that's a gift I feel that I have succeeded. <laughs> That's a great piece of advice for anybody, regardless of where they move to, just to mm -hmm. uh, uh, get yourself acclimated and find out what works for you. Yeah, great mm -hmm. suggestion. Most definitely. <laughs> yeah, it's like we were talking earlier, just in general about life, and of yes. course, you know, we're on Women in Film. Yes. Uh, we have a big project coming up later this year, our SWIFT event which will be exciting. I usually put on some type of a fashion show or, or something. I did it a couple of years back and it became now the local hit. So now I have to constantly put on one. <laughs> <laughs> Once you it's, expose it's your fun. It's been yes. fun because we started it off using models. And then of course, all our local characters that we have of our own, which are here, socialites in town that we're just, and everyone just enjoys it. It makes it a lot of fun and it makes the whole gathering a little bit more personable, I think. Yeah, that's yeah. the thing I like about Morelia. She gets people involved that might not get involved and a different persona of who they are. Oh yeah, some of us show us more color than we ever thought they had. Exactly. <laughs> they'll dance, they'll do things that they never thought they could do. So because of her free attitude about life she frees <laughs> other people up uh, you know what i'm looking at that rose on your arm but i'm looking at the picture behind there is there a story behind that oh my gosh it's so funny uh, it, it just came back to me it's, it was hanging years ago in my grandfather's store nudies and i had painted that painting probably when i was about five or six years old and the glass broke and I was going to fix it. And I just moved it over into the room for a second to see what I wanted to do with it. But it's so cool because you could see literally how it's aged and the warpness and the water down. Yes. <laughs> I mean, it's so fun. It's my own little Picasso. <laughs> exactly. And that's the way, uh, oh, that's the way we should look at the things we do. Yes, appreciate Definitely. it. Yes. And that's what we were talking about earlier when you said, I just recently did a poetry reading at, at an open poem night. And as much as I love to go up on a stage, I have no issue with that. I love to talk in front of people. I consider that almost like a natural gift for me. I usually have no fear of that, but... It was interesting. I would have pro I've written all my life and done creative things and writing and performing. It's just that I just never really over pursued or gone up and done it. And it just happened purely by accident because where I work at Mont Haven, we were hosting it. And I go, okay, I'll sign my name up. I didn't think of it as anything. But then all of a sudden I go, oh my gosh. It, and I looked at it just like you were talking about the piece behind me, like art. Sometimes you're not sure you want to show it because it may not be you're having it next to something that you know that considers to have this value or not and what is a value to you know 
And I think we learned this as we go. And I was really uh, felt felt great about the reception that I got. Like they were like, oh my gosh, this is so great. And then what I talked about when I told them the one, the first poem I had read was something that I wrote when I was very young. I hadn't even experienced love. And here I'm talking about love. And one of the ladies was a professor and she said something about how great, how you were able to build on your imagination. I go, yes, as opposed to would it build up to? Because there was reality to that poem, yeah. obviously, yes. many moons later in my life to experience that type of experience. Yes. Oh, that was fun. <laughs> but you, one thing you mentioned when we were talking earlier and the, just now, sometimes mm -hmm. we won't do things because we compare ourselves or our art or our production or whatever we compare what we've got to somebody else and we think it's not as good i think that's one of our greatest fears i yeah. have it as well and and just gradually breaking through those barriers it's always a a struggle you, we see people who do it and there's people out there who do it and i give them kudos for doing it and some of the ones that do it i hate to say is not even and there's people who are have such a value of artistry that are not, not showing it. We're in a world now where it's pretty more simplified, I should say, for us to be able to just go out there and post it. But as I spoke to you earlier, I just did an interview about my life in LA yes. and, and my experiences and being part of that livelihood and being a true Valley girl, which I am. <laughs> yeah, who are some of the artists that you grew up with in your house? Oh, God, everybody. They were all uncles. Uncle Ben, as in Ben Johnson, all the cowboy actors. The Rogers. Rogers. Yes, Gene Autry, <laughs> Dale Evans, and Clint Eastwood. I <laughs> love him. I got to meet when I was young. What an honor, too. As a young child, I was about eight years old when I met Clint Eastwood. He was doing some filming at the store as our family business needies. And as, as I was growing up, I was meant to be cute and quiet. But instead, I was cute with a big mouth. <laughs> I was never afraid to speak. That's to say the thing least, we but... have in common. <laughs> and I went ahead and I wanted to talk to him. And I was told, like, don't don't intrude on the customers. But Clint Eastwood told everyone to shh. And then pulled me aside and took me into the boot room. And we spoke for 20 minutes. And for me, that's like a lifetime experience. Because I have met people who have been principal acting roles in his movies, that said they didn't even have that. And here I'm eight years old and our conversation was, to me, was like, oh my God, I can still talk about it obviously today, but I can't remember word for word. But yeah, <laughs> but it, it was definitely the fact that he took that effort to just to talk to me as a child was amazing. And something, I think the interesting thing that you're bringing out here is you weren't afraid. You were young and you weren't afraid. You had not built in that fear that our society gets us as we mature. And this oh, yes. is, <laughs> yes, and this is exactly what people face is it's all built in. And what happens, just like you, when mm -hmm. uh, you just went ahead and talked <laughs> and <laughs> all of a sudden, you find out they're just real like anybody else. And so oh, everybody was so real. And yes. To me, what real to me and my normality was not normality to others. The people who sat at our dinner table, the people that we met daily, being around a world of entertainment and being exposed to it. Honestly, there had to be a maturity to it. Mm. And I was very fortunate of my upbringing. My mom allowed me to be a child. So my mom had to grow up very quickly being in that environment. But when it came to me being coming into this world, she allowed me to be a child. So I think it, it was different from, of course, our generations. I no longer have my mother here. She's been gone now for over 30 some plus years. Oh. And I feel like I had to grow up very quickly after a certain point. And I think, like you said earlier, when we were young, our, our and, him, and him, invitations are just like so open we're right. so much more willing to do things and then of course like I said I had to grow up uh and I think all the things that happen to us we get hurt we fall in love all the crazy stuff in life yeah. as you know that happens yes. uh get disappointed or a job doesn't go the way you want it to or whatever in life and we keep 
from putting up more and more walls. And I've done this myself. I, And now that I'm at an older age, I feel that now I'm trying to break those walls down. I need to go back to being like that eight-year-old and not, because this is my livelihood. This is what I want to do. And mm-hmm. you now it's time to, to make money and live off of what I'm able to do. And I know what I do best. And I've had fears. I've always had fears. I think we're all scared. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's the only way we won't know if we don't do it is jump, jump in. Yeah. The worst yeah. thing someone could do is say no. And, yes. <gasps> I, and you know what? If you turn around, no, it says on, we're on. Hey. <laughs> exactly. And on to the next person. That is it. <laughs> Because when we, if we allow that no to stop mm-hmm. us, then we limit our own life. You're so, oh my and, and, and it's interesting. I remember something my grandmother once told me when I was young. She got me because my grandfather was quite a character. And so I was always very kooky and a little bit different than most. And like I said, I haven't lived a normal life, what's considered to be normal. And so I find that it's even harder for me where people come in and think it's easier because you've been brought up in that world and things are given to you or what have you. Yes and no. It, it You're all constantly being compared to a parent or something of the sort. Even if you're acknowledged for your own talent, they still want to know you because, oh, because of the connection, which is fine. I utilize the connection to help me and get indoors as well. But at the same time, there's more to it. And as we get older, we need to make a living for ourselves and understand that we're just trying to do what we do best. And sometimes I think people are out there blocking us for no reason. There, I feel that especially with art itself and art in a big form, performance, acting, drawing, writing, whatever it is right. that you do, a lot of times it's always been known to be a competition or against one another. And I think we really need to come together and help each other Great because if we point. help each other, uh, I think we'd all benefit. Maybe today I'll be the person behind the camera and then tomorrow I'll be in front of it. And I think it's a fair thing where as long as we're all got something different to deliver anyhow and I think if we help one another on that day I think we can proceed forward better than going backwards which I feel a lot of us do we really do because today's world is about Instagram and all these things which is great and and I have to say this because I was telling you this earlier before we went on I did an interview and about my life in LA and I made a comment I just it just rolled off my tongue. I didn't. And I said, I go, you don't think Mario would be rolling in his grave that the rainbow bar has an Instagram? Oh my God. If you lived that era, you went to the strip and did all those fun things and were around that world. Thank God there wasn't a camera sometimes. <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> but in general, and I'm like, and I told him, I go, I was Instagram before Instagram began. And I go, but the difference was we were doing it and most of it was real. It wasn't false pretenses because a lot of these false pretenses as opposed to that was real. And what I lived and did is real. I didn't have to fake it. But like a lot of it is. I'm not trying to put against anyone that's out there doing because they're no. still doing. So I got to give them credit for doing regardless if it's material that I think that should be out there or not. <laughs> Yeah, and I I think the interesting thing that you're pointing out here, is it building character of who they really are, or Mm -hmm. is it a mask that they're wearing of of trying to be something instead of who they really are? And I think being real is what you're saying, and that is the most important thing, is just be real. Who are you? And Mm -hmm. don't try to compare yourself. You've given so many fantastic ideas here. This is unbelievable. About- I mean, it's about being real. And yeah. I know when I was about 19, 20 years old, I was out and about one night and I had met someone that, and talking to this person and for a long time. And I made a comment about reality and reality television and all that stuff wasn't even existing back in that time. Right. And I always said, it's going to be something that, how can I put it, uh, you're going to find some real raw talent. There's always yeah. going to be, I don't know if I can say this, an asshole and everywhere you mm-hmm. go, no matter what, you're going to find one of those, regardless, it's, that's irrelevant. You can't that's almost avoid right. that. But 
overall, I think you're going to, we're going to be able to film a few things a little bit cheaper, be able to find some hidden talents, but I didn't think it would explode to the extreme that it explode to, but no. I still think now people are, are really striving for that realness, the yes. being raw and how far can we go to be raw per se without it being ridiculous. We can all be entertaining, I think, to an extent. I was once asked to do a TV sh show and they were going to hire my friends. I'm hire friends for me. And I laughed and I said, why would we need to hire actors to be friends? I have friends that don't even know they're hidden actors. <laughs> right on. Yes. That, and that comes back to your I guess, partner. I guarantee you. <laughs> yeah. And it comes back to your idea of partnership, bringing people in, being helpful to each other. Getting no, it really does. I think we need that because I think we'll all help one another. It, it This industry is can be very brutal. And I see why people fear not to pursue it. I mean, I'm a guilty person of that because I feel that one of my greatest things that I do is I bring people together. Yes, you do. And, I, and that's just a gift of itself. And I do it with no initial intent you know of any kind but i've made a lot of people have a great life or a great financial situation and now i'm trying to find that where it doesn't backfire to me now it's time for me to benefit from those things where i should also benefit from it and i haven't because of my kind heart and and i still want to be real and kind but now it's time how do i do this and make a living and because I've done it for everybody else. And sometimes people remember, some don't. Yes. And <laughs> that is, oh my goodness, that's such a great point because <laughs> that is what happens in our society a lot. There are those givers and there are those takers. And sometimes they don't understand the other one. Like you are a giver. You are. Oh, totally. That's all I've ever known to do. But it's I, your... I'm given when I don't even have it. Yes, and it's something I've always turn. done. Yes. And, and, I, and that's what I, I had that, though, in my livelihood growing up. So it was just automatic yes. to do it and assume that it was going to, life would remain that way. Yes. You know, times change and things aren't easy. I have to pay a bill, too. You know, it's nice when someone else is, but it's not been that way for a long time. <laughs> and there's this, this saying, I can't remember what it is exactly, but find those people that are supportive of you. And that's what, and each phase of our lives, there are going to be different people that come along that help support us. And I don't mean take care of us financially, but help us in meeting our goals. I just recently had somebody contact me because I'm a giver also. Mm -hmm. And I had somebody contact me about an idea they had. And so I can't, and so it wasn't something I could help them with, but I could find somebody that could help them. Mm -hmm. So I did that and I'm out there still in the process of doing that. But I had, it's, it blows my mind. The people that I would least suspect that would be helpful are the people that are helpful. And so what we have to look at, it may not be our best friend. It may, yes, it may be somebody that you reach out to that you think, oh, I don't know if they'll ever respond and they respond and I'm experiencing that right now. So your point is so well taken about mm -hmm. building relationships with those who support your goals in life. And I think another critical thing that you pointed out is that uh, knowing what our goals are. Turn your can'ts into cans, but you got to know what those goals are. Mm -hmm. What and is you know, what? I, yeah. And at this point in my life now, I'm now, I'm regressing. I'm learning and remembering things from my youth and stuff. And now I'm taking the struggle to learn how to write them down, which I love to recite them. Yes. Like write. It's to write them down. And that that's not easy. It's. And, and, and what I could see what you're doing. That's why I love that picture back there. And you say you're writing down mm -hmm. because that could be a documentary about the rhinestone. Yeah. 
princess yeah. that we know, the rhinestone. Yeah. And still there is. <laughs> because I interviewed somebody on one of my podcasts that we both know. She did the same thing. She went back into her life and now she's producing that as a television show. Her life, as, and she's a young woman here in Nashville, Tennessee, but she did just what you're saying. She looked back over her life that the things she did not implement at that time and saying, I can do it now. So she started her own TV show. I could see a document. Well, I, and I've been thinking a lot about this too, about yes. something I want to do that's regards to that. And then it will continue, it can continue to go on for other people. I want to be the, Barbara Walters of it be like yes. the first one first and then lead it on to others. But what kind of guests things, would you have on there? Because I could see well, you I, I do want to have my own show first and yes. foremost. I would do something, of course, it would to have the opportunity to laugh with me and then to be with the rhinestone heiress. But my main concept would be us being real and I want to see what makes you shine that makes you sparkle and shine inside and out. That yeah. would be really the main thing that I'd want to know through my relations of people that I know, obviously in the entertainment business, it doesn't have to be that they're in the entertainment business, but overall that is my big sell and who I know. I definitely would like to do that. I've always wanted to do that. I've always wanted to do like a live show in the morning, just like that whole, back in the day of like Regis and Kathleen Lee, now it's Kelly and Mark. Yes, but uh, yes. <laughs> but that, that to me is, that's where talent is to do that. That's not easy to do as much as everyone thinks it is when they watch it. No, because every day <laughs> you've got to get up and you've got to produce something, or even if you schedule them ahead of time, it's good. when you start something, it's a lot of responsibility. I've thought about at one point, I have had this concept for a long time. Yes. A dating show that I'd like to do. And I'd like to do it here. A dating in, show? You know, uh -huh, a, a dating show. Oh and I, I know I need to talk to Donna and all them at Women in Film so we can, I think we could do it. I would be the victim at first. Yeah. <laughs> I'm getting bigger. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, and I'd be more than glad to lead it down to others later. But uh, you know what? I think that is something. It, it's, it, I think it would work. And I personally have auditioned for such shows, but yeah. I'm considered to either be too old or I'm not really old enough. I don't consider myself a senior, yet alone do I look like one. But uh, I want to say I am a senior. Like, hello. And and I do the I a, love too. <laughs> yeah, I am a senior, and seniors do have lives. So yeah, they I, do. There's some active ones, but the way it yeah. made it sound like I had to be <laughs> like, oh. And Lord. I think that is another part of my hello self market mm -hmm. is those people are what you're do talking about is they're discovering who they are. Just like hello self, that's about a woman who wakes up in midlife and senior life and says maybe life's not over but just beginning again so i, I think that. i do yes you come to a terms to like i've never been married i have no children yes. i've come to terms in life children is not something i'll be able to do or not going to have at this point in my life but i can always well remember hoda adopted at 50 some so you I can mean, have children you know, well you know what i'm saying i could always raise somebody else's or whatever yes on that note but i I want to do that. And there's things I've done in life that I've made sacrifices where maybe I didn't put that part of my life as a priority where I might have wanted it, or maybe it wasn't meant to happen at those times. I always look at it as a calling of some sort why it didn't. But it's you're... time. I want that in my life. And I might as well enjoy this time of my life with another person, which I would love to do. I've come, I'm at that point in my life where I want that. And I think, um, and I can still pursue what I want to pursue. But it, yes. I, feel, mm -hmm. I just As think a I matter of fact, that. pursue it with a partner or at mm -hmm. least have a supportive kind of person. Mariella, this is one of the best interviews I've had about real people, real life. Mm -hmm. You are sharing something that the world is struggling with right now. You have to be because I... Don't get me wrong. I'm all about entertainment and yes, the development and of, of what we have for us to be able to do this in our own homes. And here we're not talking on a screen to an extreme, but I've never had a problem ever meeting anyone to say at least, but 
I'm not into this form of technology to meet someone and that's not for me. I think it, there's pros and cons to it. And to me, I want to do it real. It might take a little bit longer and I live a life that I know that most people that I meet may not lived an eighth of my life up to age eight for me. And that says right. a lot for being a woman in her fifties. Uh, and so that's going to be a beyond an exceptional man to find. And that's not someone to just, Hey, he just ends up at my door, you know, <laughs> as nice as that would be. <laughs> yes. And who knows, who knows? <laughs> You might meet him at the grocery store. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, I I am telling you, you are speaking to so many people. I think a lot of people feel this way or they're afraid to say yes, it. Sometimes I'm saying like, babe, I might be saying too much, but no, they're afraid why, to... why should I be afraid at this point? What do I've got to lose? And, yes. You know what? Another 10 pounds while I'm working on it. It's happening day by day. <laughs> Hey, but you know what? Point, I, I got nothing to lose. It's not going to break me down. And you I've know been what? A very if we, strong, independent woman all my life. So I can. Mariella, <laughs> if we don't get honest with ourselves, uh -huh. we will take our dreams and goals to our grave. So have no regrets. Live your life. And what Mariella is telling us is no regrets living. That means that. Whatever you decide you want to do, you can find somebody to help. If you can't, you call either one of us and we will help. <laughs> Someone might lead you to the right direction. Exactly. <laughs> really <laughs> but first of all, I think that's what Hello Self is about, is getting real with ourselves. And mm -hmm. that is exactly what you're doing, is getting real with who you are and, like you said, who you want to be at this point in your life and who you want to be around at this point and the things that you want to do. And you're doing, oh my gosh, I this is such a fabulous interview about real life. Well, it is. The older I've, I'm getting, yes. you know, sometimes you- I From the biological it. standpoint, that's yeah, all. Yeah, that's definitely. Thing. It's just, no, I laugh and think of God would have said this if you asked me 30 years ago. Probably not, but there's so much truth to it. Who do I want to be around? Yes. I, mean, I know a lot of people, or should I say a lot of people know me as well. And I don't talk to those people daily. It's nice to know when you are out and about and people acknowledge and are intrigued or part of your life, which I love. I I'm, I'm, think I'm portraying something positive in some ways. I'm yes. only human. I have no regrets in life. I've had things good and bad that have happened. And I look at them as learning experiences and growth. But once again, I have no regrets. If I, they say, oh, if you could go back, there's a reason to go back and change. They were meant to happen for what's. Oh become. my gosh. A fabulous point. People will sit around and beat themselves up forever about that. Like you said, oh, if I could change this, if I, no. I mean, you know what? You would have done it one way or another, somehow, yes. some way. It might have happened a little bit different. Maybe it wouldn't have lasted as long or whatever the case would be, depending what it was. But yes. I have no regrets because I believe it's a message to what's supposed to the next bigger picture. Yes. Yeah, there is a bigger picture. It's going to happen. I'm going to see it. Because, like yeah, what you're saying is life is a series of steps. Mm -hmm. And we're taking those steps based upon the best that we are at that point. Mm -hmm. But and, it doesn't. You know, and, and it's okay. I tell people yes. this. I remember years back, my younger sister and I went on a trip together. And I said, it's okay to have everyone has that 10 year plan or yes. you know, oh, when I hit 30 or when I'll do yes. this, things in life happen and shift <laughs> and things change. It might be a little bit easier for some of people that are younger now and how things are, some things are a little bit more complicated for them to do these different challenges in life than it was during times when you or myself were growing up. I think a lot of things were different being a divorced child i always tell everyone sometimes i had to endure adult issues that were not even issues for a child to to endure yeah. just growing in a family of entertainment there's always a little 
yeah. fun dysfunction. <laughs> yes. And, um, and so, sometimes, so yeah, sometimes people would look, but there's dysfunction in everything. It doesn't matter where you come from. And we have to make our own decisions about how we're going to deal with that. And yes, and oh my gosh, there is, oh, oh, this is so much truth about life that you have just shared today for everybody. For every, <laughs> it's, yeah, it's not just about being the rhinestone princess. This is about, <laughs> this is about I'm about as real as they come. Yeah. I, mean, I, think, I think I shock people every now and then. I was told the older you get, you're not supposed to go out there and say, I do this, I know this, I know that. Oh, please. But every once in a while, I'll throw something out there that they're like, oh, you know how to do that? And I'm all like, if you really got to know me, you might find out. You know what I mean? Like, Great I, point. I, there's I have hidden secrets I've never been shy about this one I do know how to lasso I may not look the type that would know how to lasso but I do know how and if not it's always a fun conversation when you're in a bar <laughs> oh my god <laughs> one of the most famous trick ropers taught me how to lasso which was Monty Montana who did all the rose parades and all that stuff oh my gosh uh, uh, I do know how to lasso. I'm telling you, if you could give now, because I love every, oh, this has been such a fabulous interview today. But if you could give one or two key tips to our listening audience about living life, he saying hello self to them selves, what would you say to them? <laughs> Uh, I always say love and laughter is the music of our souls. It really is because I, I'm happy. I bet every day I don't wake up and everything. I've been very lucky that I have a fun, contagious laugh, I, I think. Yeah. <laughs> and that keeps me going. It is a defense also to when I'm maybe feeling certain things, but it builds character and lets me know that it's okay. It, it's, it's, I don't know. I just, I've always lived life that way. I can't let things bother me that I can't fix immediately. It's easier said than done, of course, because I'm a perfectionist too about things. I'm not going to lie. And also too, I think it's good to be real. And I think it's good to stand up for certain things that, ah. that, that are important to you. I'm not afraid to speak and maybe say, sometimes I think sometimes like I'm not oh my God, should I have said that or not or whatever. I, my life is pretty public. I don't have an issue with that. I, I was born in a livelihood like that. I think it's a little bit easier for me to do it. I know that this craft that we all enjoy to do, I think there's people that get out there and don't know how to do this. I think it's a skill alone to be able to live your life private and then yet to be able to find a sense of, sorry, public, and then have a moment of privacy. Yeah, uh, yes. And it's not that easy in today's world, but I have successfully been able to do that, believe it or not. I There's things that I do in, that are private that no one, I was just, I might surprise how typical I really am. Yeah. <laughs> yeah but and I, you know. I, Yeah. <laughs> and I think that is a great point too, is what do you want the world to know about you? What do you want the world to know? And that's what the rest of the stuff, we can't beat ourselves up. You yeah, said I, We're all real. We've all yeah. done something. Something has happened. You can there are people out there that may want to push a button to what caused this or that. But honestly, you should be grateful to be human and just live life and be able to wake up in the morning. Me is, if I get my lipstick on, I made it out the door. That's just something for me. But I think everybody has, we all have an inner struggle. God, I'd be lying to say I don't. I don't and, and it's hard because we want to belong to something and make that equivalents to us and to others and it feels good to belong to something and you could be and good at different things there are many things and sometimes it's hard to narrow down what it is that you do yes. best and I know that I have been gifted to do a lot of things that I can do but I feel they all intermix with each other so yes. I've been fortunate on that honestly it's just about being real I think you'll be surprised the more people are that way I think we'd all get along. I've also 
feel that I think this is important to say just because I don't believe what, what another person thinks doesn't mean I can't respect what you think. Oh my and God. I That's also think tough. I would I also expect the same. I have a lot of friends. A lot of us don't believe in the same thing. No. <laughs> you constantly tell me my dress is blue and we know it's white and or think it's a different color or whatever it is. I, I, I'll respect your view for all that you feel that it is. But I, I'm not going to, I've been able to do that without getting ugly. I think, I think a lot that, of people are, hmm? I think that another, you brought up another excellent point is the more we experience people that are different from us without judgment mm -hmm. experience them without judgment the more we grow and that's another aspect of hello self mm -hmm. is the more we know who we are mm -hmm. and the biases we have but we don't make judgments because that does not help building relationships or creating that kind of thing that you have we just I mean, I, I say that thing doesn't really shock me. And I have to say something funny. I don't even know if I should say this, but I'm going to say it anyhow. I was shopping. I was in a store and this gentleman says something like, I need to, and uh, what did he so funny? Because I need to back it, because I need to, because I need to back, I need to back, I need to back it, I need to back it up in there. And, and he, he was referring, he said something funny like that, but he meant to say it to his wife and his wife turned left down the aisle and he had me. And then he was like, <laughs> I started laughing and I said, and he goes, oh my God, I'm so sorry. It wasn't me. I go, you know what? I go, at this point, nothing would shock me. <laughs> you know what? And it's those moments, those. I go, you're lucky, I go, you're lucky it was me and not some other woman store because i don't know how that could have gone but i go dude it was me i i made it out to be so funny in fact his wife was laughing when she was down the aisle where you turn left and i think it helped it helped he was a very good looking man to top it off an extra plus but 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 it was funny you had to have been there i don't think most women would have been able to handle it and then he was so apologetic and i just said oh, it's okay and yeah goes, oh. as a matter of fact it was a fun moment yeah <laughs> <laughs> I go, I wasn't too shocked. I go, go for it. Go yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, <It's my> day. <laughs> I'm telling you, we're going to have to wrap this up, but oh my gosh, so much information that you shared today about real, being real and human. And if the if someone wants to get a hold of you, like maybe to help you with your dreams and goals, <laughs> no, how would they reach you? Now, we'll have her information on the podcast posting, but would they email you or how they would you email me at rhinestoneheiress at gmail.com. They can go to all my social medias, Aquevis, Facebook, yeah. Rhinestone Heiress, Rhinestone Air on Instagram. I'm sorry, Rhinestone Heiress on Instagram, Rhinestone Air on Twitter. They can just contact me that way or directly we'll put my number or whatever we need to do to get in touch. And I, I'm, if anything, if I could just make you laugh, give me a call. <laughs> Oh my God, what a, can you imagine a better gift from somebody? Mariella, I have to say thank you so much for being here today. And to my podcast listeners, I know that you have got a lot of information, ideas, tips of things that you could do to enrich your life and turn your cans into cans and your dreams into plans. And so I'm so excited that you joined us today again. I'm Patricia Leonard, the host of Hello Self Podcast. And always remember, keep dreaming. Thank you for joining Hello Self today and may it offer insights and inspire you to stay on your runway to success. Like, share, and subscribe. And remember this, keep dreaming.